bringing you Thailand's insights, direction, stability, prosperity, and sustainability. Let's get inside. Gain the insight with The Insider. Hello. Welcome to The Insider. When it comes to the issue of law and justice in Thailand, many questions are immediately coming to my mind. We have a special guest who happens to be the government's foremost legal expert on legal affairs, the Deputy Prime Minister, Dr. Wisnu Kreangam. Hello, Dr. Wisnu. Well, the government at the moment is doing in its best capacity to um, move the country forward under the three phases roadmap, and of course, we are now during the um, a comprehensive reform of the country. You are the foremost government expert on the um, legal reform affairs, and of course, my first question: How long we haven't seen this reform in Thailand? Not even law reform. I think any kind of reform. We had law reform last time since uh, during the reign of King Rama V. That was about 120 years ago. That's a big law reform. After that, just the repair of fixing this and that. Modernizing. Modernizing, but not the reform as the people understand in in Europe, in in other countries. Now we need the process of reform officially. So this is the major change, and of course, this is a major reform uh, about the legislation in Thailand. Yes. Of course, I can understand, understand that uh, many of the law are uh, outdated and uh, need to be reformed, need to be modernized, needs to be changed, and of course, it need to be um, suitable for the context of the society mm -hmm. of the country at the moment. What are the guiding principle for this reform in Thailand that we are doing at the moment? The biggest problem in our society is we have too many laws. So that's why now we start talking about deregulation. Deregulation means try to have less law, only necessary law, and we need decriminalization of law. Several laws have the criminal sanction, put people in jail, put them in debt. So now. Sometimes we can change this concept from criminal sanction to administrative sanction or even civil sanction. Just let them pay, teach them, put them in 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 just custody, but not in jail. And another term that I want to use now is decentralization. This is the, another principle, which means that we have to de decentralize power from the central authority. To the provincial authority, so people will get the convenience when they want to contact with the government officials, and try to decrease working with the committee. We have about 500 laws right now that uh, when people want to get any permission or license from the government, they have to apply. And it takes a long time in order to get the license or, or the uh, admission or acceptance from the government, and it's uh, the road to the corruption, because when people want convenience, they just pay on the table. They know that otherwise they have to wait for two or three years in order to get the license. So that's why this government introduced one important law. It is the. Licensing Facilitation Act, and this is an ex a good example of law reform. And the question from the ordinary people like me would be: Will the people benefit from from this new law? For example, will this law be able to restore um, Peace order, and limits order yes. to the country? I think so, because when when we have law, good law, and modern law, it means that everything will be under control. Uh, public officers will be will feel that uh, they have power to deal with this problem. They will feel like confident to use the law, and people know their rights, know their duties, 
and everything will be under control, as I said. A representative from the World Bank came to see me, and uh, they said they want to congratulate the government on the passing of one law. What the is? Yes, the name is the Secured Transaction Act. This law had been waiting for about uh, almost 20 years. The World Bank proposed this law 20 years ago. And as I worked with the government, several governments before, I know that every government tried very hard to push this law, to introduce this law to the parliament. But it's not possible due to many difficulties. Now, this bill became the law already, the Secure Transaction Act, which, is, which will be very, very useful for the business sector. This is one example. Will this new law um, you know, assure them that uh, Thailand would be um, free from corruption? In order to deal with problems, we know that uh, public awareness is very important. Education is another thing that is needed. But the law is needed too. We cannot just talk about education, public awareness, or uh, make people know what happened in the society. But we need punishment, we need law, we need process just to, to deal with some people that try to find the gap in the law to, to be corrupt. So that's why this government put one law which is very important and it has been waiting for a long time too. The law on the special court dealing with the corruption case. Otherwise, the corruption case will go to the ordinary court, court of justice. This is for the first time? Yeah, just case by case. For example, if there is the new case in this year, it may be tried in the court in the next two years because everything will run by number. First come, first serve. But now, we have the law on the establishment of the criminal court on corruption cases, which means that we will have the expert judge to, to try this case. We have the different process or special procedure in this court with the severe punishment. And the case, after finished from the court of first instance, can be appealed to the Court of Appeals, and that's it. This cannot be appealed to the Supreme Court. So everything will run very fast. This will happen on August, no, I mean October the 1st this year. The new court will be open. In the past, particularly over the past two years, we have experienced the, the turmoil the government need to um, apply the special security measures such as the um, Section 44. And any rationale of using the uh, Section 44 and how the government used the Section 44? It gives the power to the Prime Minister or the Chairman of the uh, National Council of Peace and Order to do anything, anything, even to correct, to amend the law, even to send people to jail, or even to create the new crime for the society. But uh, within one year and 10 months, the present Prime Minister never used Article 44 in that area. He declared that he will not use this uh, power, this article, to, to interfere the judicial process or to impose any duty upon the people, especially the innocent people. So, so he just used this special power to reform the society for administrative purpose only. Sometimes we call it for constructive purpose. For example, to, 
to do something that we, we have to do it fast. We cannot wait for the National Legislative Assembly to do their job. For example, in order to, to solve the problem of the civil aviation, fishery, tips, and uh, even narcotics duck, drugs, or to remove the government officials from one post to another post. So we need this power when we want to move fast. And, and that is the rationale of using Article 44. We now think that uh, sometime we may need to use Article 44 to do the reform, reform the society. Because sometimes the ordinary process may be too slow. And sometimes we may need Article 44 to drive first as like, temporarily as the first step. And in the meantime, we may introduce the same law, Act of Parliament, the bill to the Parliament. So whenever the bill, that bill becomes the law, we just uh, abolish all the issue through Article 44. Then that, that is the plan for the future, the near future. Since we are in Thailand, how can we assure um, you know, our foreign friend that uh, the law that we are using now is, is um, you know, it will help them to, to feel confident and feel secure living in Thailand or staying in Thailand or visiting Thailand? We just use this article as the administrative instrument to kill or to solve some problem only in the Thai society. I believe that Article 44 will, will make tourists or even the foreigners feel comfortable to stay and work, invest in Thailand. So talking about the reform, a comprehensive reform, people expect a lot from this. I feel that this is a daunting task. It is not easy, but we have to do in our best capacity. So my question to you is, how long will it take you know, for us to achieve our goal of the reform? Reform is unlike changing. If you want to change anything, it may take about a few minutes, one minute, one day, two days, or one week. But in order to reform, you have to change mindset of the people. You have to change vision of the people. You have to set the goal. You must have the roadmap. You must have the process. And we talk about participation from the public. So it takes time in order to educate people and make people realize that what we want, what we need, and what we are going to. So it takes time. I don't want to say one year, 10 years, or even 20 years. This reminds me of the reign of King Rama V. And in anything that you want to reform, it takes time. Could be shown not very easy. So we must not give up you know, doing the reform and talking about um, the legal reform, which is a foundation of the society, a foundation for the um, public civility. So, well, thank you very much, uh, Your Excellency, Deputy Prime Minister, Dr. Wissenu. Thank you very much once again. Thank you very much. Thank you. My honor to be here too. Thank you for watching The Insider. Next week, we'll take a look into Thailand 20 year strategic plan. Please stay tuned. Thank you once again and Swadi Club. Laying or having a solid foundation for the country. We need long term perspective and uh, principle how should we develop the country. After adopting or applying this strategy, how Thailand would look like.